make an ornamental peace sign with my earthenware clay today. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to spritz the canvas covered board. If you have any old cleaning spray bottles or if you have a plain bottle that you use with water to spritz plants or spritz your shirts while you're ironing, that can be used to wet the canvas on your board. And then to roll out the best coils, I always tell my students to squeeze it into the shape of a Slim Jim smoked sausage because the longer you squeeze it with your hands first, the easier it is to roll it across the canvas and get it nice and even. Now I've already extended the length of my board so I'm going to rip it in half and continue rolling so it's a little thinner. Wherever it's a little bumpier, I'll smooth with gentle pressure Wherever it's a little thicker, I'll roll it a little longer there. But what I tend to do is start from the center and roll my way out to the edge. That one looks good. So now I'm going to do this one. If the canvas has dried, spritz it a few times. Don't make puddles. No flooding necessary. Just spritz it a little bit. Start in the center. Roll back and forth until you evenly get to the edge. And again, if there's any uneven spots, apply a little smoothing pressure where it's thicker or bumpy. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I like to twirl my coils together, bringing them, lining them up, and rolling one side forward, rolling the other side back, gently. The idea is not to twist and crimp because it will break. This is soft, gentle, fragile clay. You have to be gentle to it. So now I'm going to take this and turn it into a circle. I up how big I want it to be. I picture it just kind of hanging on the wall or maybe hanging in a window. And then I'm going to score and slip those ends together. I'm going to take my wire brush and dip it in the water. Score and slip those ends and gently smooth that into one even piece. There we go. If your fingers get too wet, dry them on your canvas. So now I'm going to take what was left and make that section that goes down the middle of the piece sign and score and slip that as well. This is earthenware clay, so it's going to need to be fired in the kiln. You can do any of the sculptures that you've seen me do in any of my other YouTube videos with earthenware clay just as well as you can your, with your play clay, your homemade play clay that you've got at home. Just know that the earthenware has to be fired. And if it's a thick sculpture, it has to be hollowed out so it doesn't blow up in the kiln. Or if you only have the homemade play clay, you can do this with that clay as well. I'm rolling out another coil for those other two pieces. Yeah, that'll work. It'll come out of the bottom. There we go. And I'll scratch and wet those as well. In. There. Just with a dry, soft, gentle finger, you can smooth out those lines. I'm doing all this so gently, no muscles necessary. There we go. And the cool thing about it being soft clay is that it, you could see that it didn't fit exactly right at first, but just with a little bit of, of gentle maneuvering, I can get it all to fit together. So there's the peace sign. I like the idea of adding a flower to it. So I'm gonna roll out another coil, flatten it quick in my hand, and then spiral that up. 
There we go. And add a few petals to it. Roll a bead and flatten it out. Roll a bead, flatten it out. And again, until it opens up into a nice blossom here. There we go. And you notice that I didn't scratch and wet those petals on, but the way I'm going to secure all those petals is by scoring and slipping underneath and then scoring and slipping it in a nice little nested position here. There. Sweet. Then I will take and make a little leaf. I use the needle tool, just laying the needle tool flat on the clay makes nice little lines to represent the veins in the leaf. I'll do that again. Lay the tool down against the clay that makes nice little lines and score and slip that on. Score and slip the back of the leaf. And then of course it has to be dried completely before it can go into the kiln to become bisque. There. And then I, this is a fragile sculpture. So I'm gonna leave this dry as it is so that it stays in the same position and doesn't warp. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.